Let's go. All right, so I wanted to do a video about uh, about Whoop. A lot of people have been asking me about my little Whoop band, and uh, and there's a lot of questions that were gathered. And the thing is, I'm not smart enough to know how it works. So I've got an expert on. I've got this handsome man um, who's wearing he's wearing my Cookie Fondo shirt, and I'm wearing his coaching shirt. Uh, this is my longtime coach, life teammate, uh, Frank Overton. Frank, um, how long have you been using the Whoop? I think about a year since April of 2018. Okay, so that's pretty. It's pretty OG Whoop territory. <laughs> um, so what the the summary of it? It's a recovery tracking device, right? That's probably the best. If, if it's you're like a totally power meter for here. your recovery, is the way I describe it. Oh, I like that. Okay, <laughs> that fits you because you're a big power dork. Hang on, totally. I can't. I can't turn my shirt around. Can you see the back? <laughs> yeah. Just so FTP you guys know who you're does. dealing with on the dork factor, um, <laughs> in a good way. But um, so so I guess the the first thing is uh, it so it measures. So I you used to measure recovery with like resting heart rate, um, and and I guess Training Peaks has some useful tools where it sort of looks at you know here's here's how hard you normally ride, here's how hard you rode the last couple days, so it knows that you're recovered, but it's missing a lot of factors, right? Right, I think that the assumption before the WHOOP came along was that we would design recovery days into your training plan, and we just assume, oh, because Phil took a day off, you'd be recovered and good to train the next right. day. And what don't the what I did is, that day. You know, that yeah. Re that recovery day, I might have gone dancing, you, just because it wasn't in the ride. Right. Um, yeah. There's a lot to life. Like the, it, it represents your lifestyle and what you do mm -hmm. off the bike or what you don't do, like sleep and stress. And, right. and so the whoop now tells us, hey, you had a recovery day, but you're still not recovered. And then that gives you information to use to maybe make a change to your training plan based on what the whoop's telling you about your recovery. Right. So when it tells you, so the, what happens every day you get you get a recovery score, uh, like when you wake up, it knows when you wake up, um, you get a recovery score, and it'll say between zero and a hundred percent, and the it's like zero to twenty is red or twenty five, and then uh, there's a, a yellow, and then there's a green. Um, so what happens when? So a lot of times, like the whole point of training is, you know, you wear yourself down, and then you rest, and your your body adapts to that that strain. Um, so like there's been days where I'm in the red and, and I'm supposed to keep going. And so how do you sort of decide that? Like, how do you say, okay, this is, this is when this red means actually stop. <laughs> right. Well, you know, the, the red, green, yellow is kind of like a stoplight, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, red means stop. Don't probably do what's on your training plan. Kind of like Monopoly, do not pass go. Mm -hmm. Um, then the way, like if you have a hard interval workout on your training plan and you wake up and you're in the red, something's not jiving. And right. what you should do is that's when you want to, um, you know, call me or text mm -hmm. me or whatever you do and say, Hey, I'm in the red. What do we do? And then we'll probably make a, a change to your training plan because being in the red and doing VO twos, for example, they, right. that's not, that's not going to work. You, right. you have to listen to your body, not right. the training plan. So typically like for, I noticed for like for for high end stuff, I'm doing sprints. You want me in the green. So when I was when I was doing the high end track standing starts, I want to be real fresh for that. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas like you can do an endurance ride in the yellow, you'll still get those yep. numbers in. You're just not as sharp. And then the red, you're really getting nothing done. The red is is that's that's nap territory. Um, right. Ideally, you're on the red the day after your two or three day training block, and ideally, right. you're in the green following a rest week or re recovery day, like a Tuesday or a Saturday. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's some times where what's, what I guess is cool about it is there, there were some times where like, you'd give me a big training block. Uh, I would do it. I would go through like a, you know, a solid seven day, whatever. Um, mm -hmm. and at the end it's got me still in the green and it's like, I'm supposed to rest, but F it, I'm gonna do another day. Uh, yeah. like I'll, I'll just, you know, just keep going. And then one day it's like, okay, now you're red. It's like, all right, peace. <laughs> <laughs> uh, today, well, today I'll nap. That's like that's the beauty of the whoop. You know, it not only does it tell you when not to train, but it can tell you probably when you should keep going. Right. And like, 
train, train more, train harder. Right. You know, probably like instinctually what you naturally feel anyway. Sure. No, the, the like a big a big issue that I had with well not an issue but uh, you know when you're racing you're traveling and and the the typical performance metrics wouldn't really gather that um, it didn't gather life stress so there were there were periods of my racing career where like I on on paper per power meter I should be killing it except someone there, there's a death in the family or I just flew to Italy from somewhere, you know, and, and it yeah. doesn't know that. Whereas the whoop does know the whoop. It, it can tell there was a funny moment. Well, that's not funny at all. There was a really creepy moment where after my crash, um, I hadn't ridden for a few days, you know, like obviously I couldn't, I couldn't move for a few days. And, um, and I, and I put the, I, I think I wasn't wearing it for a couple nights and I put it on while I was in the hospital. Um, and and the next morning it woke up or I woke up and it, it said, uh, so I hadn't worked out and it knew I hadn't worked out and I wondered what it would do. And it was like, it said 1%. And I had <laughs> done, I'd done big training blocks for me where my goal is to get that thing as low as I can. And I don't mm-hmm. think I got it below like 12, really flogging myself for a week or something. And then one day it's one and I was just like, does it know when I'm going to die? <laughs> <laughs> that was, you had any clients die with the whoop and what is their score well thankfully i've never had a client or an athlete die do you think anyone so, has died with the whoop do, do you go to zero percent you is that what, i gotta ask them you should yeah that's on the yeah. tombstone well um, yeah i mean clearly you were completely effed up yeah so. but it was cool that it knew because it had no way of knowing by the metrics that the other things would have known yeah. So that was what was cool. Have you gotten sick on the whoop yet? Because the whoop oh, will yeah. tell you before you even know you get sick. Exactly. And you don't know what's up. But yeah. then when you do get sick, you'll be like, oh, it makes sense now. Right. Yeah, that's exactly it. Where it's like, I, I, I kind of tell, I used to know from resting heart rate will get elevated when you're about to get sick. And I used to know yeah. it from that. Um, yeah. And it's, yeah, it's kind of the same thing. Or I, I kind of just know my body. Like I'm down 20 watts today and that's weird. And the next day you have the sniffles. Yeah, um, yeah, and, but so then you come out full blown sick with the fever the next day. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. At some point you 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 realize it. Um, can you can you explain heart rate variability? Because that's that's the main <laughs> thing, and I that's the that's why you're here is because I can talk about the rest of it, but that's the part I'm not <laughs> smart enough. Well, I'll try. I'm not very good <laughs> at it. It's been a while since my cardiac physiology class, okay. but. It, heart rate variability measures the, the uh, millimeter, not millimeter, microseconds of mm-hmm. differences in the, the beats of your heartbeat. Apparently, a healthy heart is one that has uh, variability in between the heartbeat. So it's not like, you know, every one second. Like, so it'll it's be, bump, bzz, bump, bzz. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like, well, more like point one second versus and then a point four, right. something like that. And, and the science has determined that when you're, you know, when your HRV goes up, you're recovered. When it goes down, it's an indication of, of your like strain or cardiac, mm-hmm. cardiovascular strain. So you want an HRV that goes up and down. You want it to go down when you train hard, go back up when you've recovered. And whoop, I believe uses that as a, as a way to factor into their algorithm to help factor like measure your recovery right um yeah as you get older for me like i'm i'm an old fart now so my hrv doesn't go up and down as much but like you young guys you know young bucks yeah it's goes way high and then they can swing back low i yeah. think i've seen in the 300s which i remember well, jeremy was freaking out about powers is obsessed with it too Mm-hmm. Um, and and we were going. He was like, "What is that? That's wrong." And I was yeah, like, no, I was two eighty yesterday. <laughs> Dang. Um, yeah, I never have saw. I've never seen over a hundred, but it'll get um, pretty low, like around twenty. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, it'll be between like thirty and sixty. Okay. Day to day. Yeah. Okay. The um the other thing that I liked about it, or that I still like about it, but I guess I already sort of learned it, was it it lets you. I've always fought sleep. Sleep has been a big, I've said this in my videos before. And I, so I mentioned this in, when I, when I talked about CBD, um, yeah. that it, it tracks your sleep. And when you're looking at it, it doesn't just tell you how long you were asleep. It tells you how many times you woke up. 
It tells right. you it tells you how much you were in bed, but also how much you actually slept. When there's a discrepancy, sometimes that you might not realize. Yeah, um, yeah. But I was able to empirically experiment with my sleep. So okay, here's here's what happens when I have here's what happens when I have you know when I eat a normal dinner. Here's what happens when I have one glass of wine. Here's what happens when I have two. Here's what happens when I have uh, five milligrams of THC. Here's what happens when I smoke crack. Oh, that's never happened. Um, <laughs> but I'm guessing it would be interesting. I was just asking, here's what happens when I sniff glue. <laughs> right. um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, here's what happens when I break a bunch of bones and spend some time <laughs> in the ER. Um, so what, what else, uh, what else in that card? What's like, what's another tool that, that you can think of where I just put you in a bad spot? Um, or what have you used it for that you found, uh, it to be useful? Yeah. I mean, I think overall, like sleep is a big one. I think that's a Holy grail for athletes. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, the guys in the tour right now are probably sleeping 10, 11 hours oh, a yeah. night as much as possible. And, and, you know, like athletes, if they want to go into monk mode, like when you go up to the wattage cottage, mm -hmm. you know, the more you sleep, the more you recover. And so that's like the biggest one to look at in with the whoop is just a sleep tracker. Mm -hmm. The big revelation for me when I started using that as a sleep tracker was I was uh, going to bed at 10, getting up at 6, 630. And I thought I was getting eight and a half hours of sleep, mm -hmm. but the whoop's like, uh, uh, you were awake for an hour. What? So yeah. What are you doing? So, well, <laughs> yeah, you're like restless. Yeah. Or, you know, you're, you're rolling around yep. and you, you think you're just cause you don't remember it. You know, right. but so what I started doing is going to bed earlier, trying to sleep a little bit later. Mm -hmm. And then I was getting up to eight hours a night and that, okay. but I had to be in bed for nine. Right. Know? Yeah. So you had to carve out that time. The other thing that the, the whoop has, uh, w was super helpful with is, um, uh, like helping me, uh, understand like life stress. Right. So like, like if you have like a stressful day at work and, uh, you know, like, money's bothering you or, mm -hmm. or kids or relationship, I could see that reflected in my HRV the next day. Sure. And then, um, that I would get a poor recovery score or, uh, on the other hand, like, uh, I, I, I did some experimentation with like float tanks last summer. Oh, that's right. Remember that? The sensory yeah, yeah, yeah. deprivation tanks, sure. basically where you go and float in, mm -hmm. uh, water Yep. Uh, it's a body temp. It's uh, no sound, no light, sure. no iPhone for a whole hour. And you get really inside your yeah. head. Yeah. And it's kind of like a um, forced meditation. Right. And or really like you can kind of be in this state of like I'm not awake, but I'm not asleep because you can't sleep because you'll drown. Right. That sort of thing. But it doesn't sound man, stressful at like all. A really, we don't want to drown. That had right. like a really good effect on my HRV. My, the next huh. day. My HRV would go through the roof. That's like where I saw some of my high, wow. highest HRVs, and you get a good recovery score. And okay. like I'd have some good days training. So, do you meditate? Do you simulate that? Do you do that more often? I do. Uh, I have a regular yoga practice. So, okay. um, for me, I'm I'm kind of too antsy to meditate, but yeah. I can uh, go to yoga class with a bunch of other people in the room, okay. and and you don't. You can't cut off. You can't check your iPhone. So sure. it's like I can focus. Yeah. So I do that regularly. That's like my moving meditation. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. That's something. Plus, like an easy bike ride for me is kind of where like I can. Right. I feel like I'm kind of meditating. I kind of I feel that way about like a hard app. Like the, the only time that I go through life and I'm not thinking about anything is when I'm like doing a group ride or a race, right. which I don't do anymore. Um, yeah. So that sort of checks the meditation box, but. For um, me too. Yeah, but uh, but not not so much the recovery score. Um, right. <laughs> cool. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, you're adding in. Yeah, that's where you're training hard. That uh, but it helps though. It's that's uh, oh for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just looking at my list. I I answered all the questions that people have asked me. Um, okay. So so that's it. Any is there any proselytizing or or do we check all the boxes? What did I what did I miss or what did what did the people miss? Uh, I think when you use a device like this, you need to just keep it real and, and use it uh, to help understand how your lifestyle affects your recovery mm -hmm. and how your training affects your recovery because it's a balance. When you're balanced between your training and racing, you can start getting in these uh, yellow and, and green days, and that's mm -hmm. where your training is really going to thrive and you're going to get faster. But right. if you have 
like all these red days and you're still taking rest days, you got to ask yourself, you know, why am I in the red? You know, right. maybe it's because you don't sleep enough, mm -hmm. which a lot of, is a problem for a lot of folks. Yeah. Or maybe you have a stressful job. Maybe, you know, like we just moved a couple weeks ago. That'll do it. And, dude, it was so stressful. And yeah. like, you know, I was prob I was in the red like a bunch, You're even though riding. I wasn't riding that yeah. much. So those are things like, you know, for the, the person that leads a stressful life, stressful job, things mm -hmm. like that. Maybe people uh, get too angry on their commute home. They should ride their bike instead of <laughs> drive to work. Things like that. that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's cool. I guess you can experiment. You can uh, You can check things out. Um, okay. Yeah. I like it. I think, uh, I think that was good. That answered everybody's things. People can leave me alone. They can message you if they want more questions. Cause I've, I'm past my ability. Yeah. Um, we did a good podcast on whoop, uh, last summer in case you want to check that out. Fastcatcoaching.com. Okay. And enter whoop. It's, it's on our podcast page. Okay. I'll link uh, that. I'll link that in the thing. Yeah. I'll link, I'll link Frank's coaching as well. Um, but, uh, yeah, so check the description. There is, I do have a, a coupon code for, for whoop. Um, they are a sponsor, so uh, so check that out. It's all caps Phil sent me, but there's links and then Frank, and uh, and again I love your shirt, sir, and thanks for this one. <laughs> thanks for this one. <laughs> all right, we'll talk soon, buddy. Appreciate it. Yep. Good luck. Cheers.